next we come to diffusion diffusion is the movement of molecules of any substance it can be solid liquid gas it can be solute it can be solvent from the region of high concentration to a region of low concentration and these two substances should be in contact with each other this diffusion is also a passive process it does not require any energy it works with the kinetic energy of the molecules because the molecules of the substance they have kinetic energy in them so all the molecules whether it is solid liquid or gas they are in continuous random motion so diffusion will continue as long as there is a difference in concentration of the two substances which are in contact with each other let us see an example of diffusion when we drop a sugar cube in a beaker of water what we find after some time the sugar cube has disappeared why it happens so the sugar cube as soon as you keep in water we find the sugar molecules in the cube are in high concentration so from that region of high concentration the sugar cube molecules they move out into the water where its concentration is less so as they spread out into the water they form a uniform mixture they become a uniform sugar solution so here also we find that movement of particles here the sugar particles or sugar molecules they moving from a region of high concentration to region of low concentration another example we can see in the form of a perfume bottle if you open the perfume bottle in one corner of the room after some time we find that the whole room you can get the smell of the perfume what happens when you open the bottle the molecules of the perfume which are in high concentration inside the bottle they move out into the air where their concentration is less so diffusion is taking place and this spreads out in the whole room and so we get the smell of the perfume in every part of the room what are the significance of diffusion diffusion helps in the exchange of gases plants the exchange gases they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen with the help of diffusion this takes place from between the air and the leaves it have, it occurs through the stomata secondly water vapor is also lost from the leaves through the stomata during transpiration thirdly ions and other molecules they move within the cell within the protoplasm of the cell by diffusion it also has in the movement of gases liquids and solutes inside the plant body it also has in the transportation of food from one part of the plant body to the other and this food is generally transported through the phloem next process is the osmosis osmosis is the phenomena in which water molecules from their region of higher concentration they move to a region of lower concentration across a semi permeable membrane <clears throat> so in this process what we see the two solutions are separated by a semi permeable membrane and here only the water molecules move in diffusion what we have seen we have seen both the solute solvent or solid liquid or solid solid they can move 
from region of high to region of low concentration. But here, it is only the movement of the water molecules. Only the water molecules will move from where its concentration is high to a region where its concentration is less. And that will be across a semi-permeable membrane. Let's see this little bit, this diagram. What we find here on this side, we have a more dilute solution. That means there is more water molecules. And here we have a less dilute solution where we have less water molecules. And it is separated by a semi-permeable membrane. So as on the right hand side, we see more number of water molecules and on the left hand side less number of water molecules so where is the concentration of water molecules more on the right hand side and on the left hand side concentration of water molecule is less so water molecules will move from a region of high concentration that is from the right side to a region of low concentration through this or across this semi permeable membrane because it is a semi-permeable membrane, it only allows water molecules to pass. It does not allow the sugar molecules to pass. This will continue until and unless both the solutions on the either side of the cell membrane have an equal concentration of water molecules. So this explains the process of osmosis. So what are the characteristics of this process? Osmosis, like diffusion, it is also a passive process, does not require any energy. And it only, because these two solutions which are undergoing osmosis, they will have different concentration. Thirdly, they should be separated by a semi-permeable membrane. So there should be two solutions of different concentration and these two solutions should be separated by a semi-permeable membrane. Then only osmosis will take place. And the rate of osmosis take place faster when there is a higher difference in concentration. More the difference in concentration, more will be the rate of osmosis. And another thing is, if the surface area is more, then there also will be higher rate of osmosis. Let us see the experiments to demonstrate osmosis. Here we take two large size potatoes where the skins are peeled off, the bases are made flat so that they can sit in a dish containing water. Cavity is made inside so that we can put sugar solution. In one we put sugar solution, in one we put water. And the levels are marked with a pin both the levels and we leave it for few hours so what we find after few hours we find that as we can see in the setup a the We can see what? We can see the level of the sugar solution has gone beyond the pin. And in the setup B, the level remains the same. Why it happened so? Here, this potato is acting as a semi permeable membrane. So, water from the beaker as it is plain water moves 
into the cavity where there is sugar solution. Sugar solution means there is less water. So in the beaker, the concentration of the water molecule is more. So water molecules moves from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. But in setup B, both the water in the beaker and inside the cavity of the potato, they are same concentration because they're simple plain water. Here also the same plain water, here the same plain water. So they are in having same concentration, so there is no movement. So what we see from this, that water molecules, they move across the semi-permeable membrane, whereas there is no movement of water molecules because the concentration of water molecules are same. Let us see another experiments, experiment with the help of thistle funnel. Here we have an inverted thistle funnel. The mouth is covered with a cellophane paper, which is acting as a semi-permeable membrane. Inside, we have the sugar solution kept inside the thistle funnel. This dipped in a picar containing plain water. There is another setup. In the setup, we have the opposite. We have the sugar solution inside the beaker and we have the water inside the thistle funnel. Here also, the thistle, mouth of the thistle funnel is covered with cellophane paper. So what will we observe after a few hours? We can see the level is, initial level was here. The level became, there's an increase or rise in the level of the sugar solution which was there inside the thistle funnel. Why? Because water from the beaker entered into the thistle funnel, traveling through the cellophane paper, which is acting as a semi-permeable membrane. Here osmosis has taken place. It's like endosmosis entering this cell. So water has entered into the thistle funnel. And because of water entering into the thistle funnel by osmosis, the amount of water or the amount of sugar solution becomes more. So the level rises along the stem of the thistle funnel. Whereas in the second one, water from the thistle funnel comes out into the beaker. Because here there is plain water, in the beaker there is sugar solution. So plain water means high concentration of water molecules. Sugar solution means low concentration of water molecules. So water molecules move from a region of high concentration to region of low concentration through the semi permeable membrane that is the cellophane paper. So as water comes out, there's a decrease in the level of the, of the water in the, inside the thistle funnel. What is the importance of this osmosis to the plants? It is by this process, plants are absorbing water and minerals. It is by this process, as water enters the cells, turgidity is caused. The cells swell up, they become tight and builds the target pressure in the plant cells. Thirdly, it allows the movement of water from one cell to another cell. Cell to cell osmosis takes place. So movement of water from one cell to another cell, this also takes place by osmosis. And along with the water, minerals also move. It regulates the opening and closing of the stomata. And it also helps to absorb some moisture by the plants during the drought and frost condition. Now there are two types of osmosis, endosmosis and exosmosis. Endosmosis means inward movement of water. 
water entering the cell. So when a cell is surrounded by a low concentrated solution, a low concentrated solution means there is more water molecules in it. Whereas inside the cell, there is less water molecules. So water from outside enters. It causes entry of water into the cell. As water enters into the cell, it causes swelling and turgidity of the cell. In exosmosis, what happens? The opposite. It is the outward movement of water. Water from inside the cell comes out. In this case, the cell is surrounded by a higher concentration. The solution which is surrounding the cell is of higher concentration. So, water from inside the cell comes out. Because inside the cell there is more water molecule. Outside is a higher concentration. That means there is less water molecules. So, water from inside the cell comes out. So, it causes exit of water and it causes shrinkage of the cell. 